iDisposable is a really powerful tool for ensuring proper resource management and safety for your application. In this video, we're going to look at how iDisposable and using statements work together to protect your resources. Now, for most of my training, I worked to give an in-depth perspective on technology, including best practices and implementation details. However, sometimes you just need a quick introduction to a topic. That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So let's jump over. I already have something built out for us as a demo. This is a console application I have in the program.cs, just a using directive and then instantiation of this demo resources class. The demo resources class is a really simple class. It has a class with one method called do work. And here we we simulate open a connection, we do work, and we close a connection. That's all simulation, obviously. But what this is going to do is kind of give us a behind the scenes of what might happen if we were to, say, connect to SQL or if we were to write to a file. Basically, we're talking about anything where we have unmanaged resources. And if you're not familiar, unmanaged resources are resources that are not controlled by the garbage collector. The garbage collector doesn't manage them. So things like file access or network access or database access or talking to the operating system or the memory directly or anything to do with graphics typically are all unmanaged resources. There's things outside of our control. And so this right here is kind of like you can picture it as connecting to a database where you know we're opening a connection and we're doing work and then we're closing that connection to the database. So that's kind of what we're simulating here, but we're doing it in our own class. We can kind of see behind the scenes what's happening because, you know, this can work just fine. So if I were to say demo dot do work and run this, everything's going to look great. So we open the connection, we do the work and we close the connection. And this last bit here is really important. And the reason why is because if we open a connection to SQL and we do some work, but we never close it. Well, then SQL kind of holds that open for us. It's like holding open a door for us. And if we keep doing this over and over again, where we open a new door and never close it, well, we got all these, these connections open to SQL and it can clog up the server. And this is maybe where, you know, you know, back in the day, back, you know, when I, my early days of development, we would have a SQL server where we ended up rebooting it every night. And yes, I know everyone here just collectively cringed. But the reason why is because it kept running out of memory and we couldn't figure out why. Well, the reason why was because applications were opening connections to the database and leaving them open, either because they crashed or because they just forgot to close them. And what would happen is they would stay open, they'd clog up a server so a server couldn't get any work done. It was, it was very slow. It had less uh, ports available. And so rebooting closed all those connections. So that's not what you want to do. You don't want to have to tell your database administrator, go ahead and reboot the server every night. That will just make things all nice and tidy. It's not, it's not a good idea. Just don't do it. So instead, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you always have this closed connection running. So, so far, everything looks good. But what happens if something bad happens? So throw new exception, um, I broke. Okay, so our application just broke. Now, again, this is a simulation, but we broke when we try to do work. So notice this kind of grayed out here. It's saying, I'll never get to that line. And in fact, if you run this, well, first of all, it's going to crash the application. So let's be good citizens. And we're going to go a snippet, surround with, and we'll say, yeah, we'll do a try catch because try catch fixes everything, right? Well, no, it doesn't fix everything, but it does make some things better. So we're just going to say ex.message just to see the I broke message. So, but when now you've, we've, we've solved the problem though, our application doesn't crash. And so if we run this, yeah, we open the connection, we do the work and we broke. And so everything is fine, right? Well, no, it's not because notice what we're missing. Close connection. It didn't happen because we crashed before it could happen. So the application, the connection stayed open. That's a bad thing. 
And so since it's an unmanaged resource, that connection can stay open for a long time and cause major issues, especially if we do this over and over again and we're not being good citizens and closing things down. So what Microsoft is, they add a interface to the .NET system that we can implement. We can say I disposable. And we just say control dot to implement the interface. And it has one method that's just public void dispose. And in this method, we do something to dispose, meaning this happens when the class gets disposed or closed down. In our case, we're going to say console write line closing connection via dispose. Okay, just to make sure we see the difference here. So now if we um, if we run this again, well, nothing's going to happen, but we'll just see that nothing happens. Well, why did nothing happen? Well, we implemented the interface, but that's it. But what we're going to do is use a using statement. Now, just for contrast, this is a using directive. And yes, they're often confused with each other because they both start with using. And yes, that's confusing. So a using directive says, hey, I want to shorten something. So instead of saying disposable demo dot demo resource, we just say demo resource. But a using statement, what it does is it says, I want this, this class right here must implement the dispose method using the I disposable interface, which means that because of that, this using statement will properly call that dispose method every single time, no matter what. And let's go back to our demo resource real quick. I'm going to comment out that exception just to see what happens. Okay. So in the happy case, we have closing connection and closing connection via dispose, both being called. Now, typically in a dispose, you're going to check to see if the resource is still open and then close it. So if the database connection is still open, close it. But in our case, we're just going to double up on closing, right? But what if this exception happens? Let's run it again. And we have open connection, do work. I broke closing connection via dispose. So it's still going to close that connection via dispose either way. So even with an exception that breaks our process, we don't have to do anything else. No other code changes down here. We just have to add this using statement. Now, to be clear, this using statement, notice it's, it's finished with a semicolon here. This means that it's going to close at the end of the scope, meaning at the end of program.cs. So if I were to say, I'm done running program.cs, I want you to see where this line of text shows up. So if we run this, we'll see that I'm done running program.cs shows up before we close the connection. That's because of the scope of this using statement. Now you can wrap this in a set of parentheses and then put curly braces and let's close them down here like so. And what that will do is that will say that this using statement lasts until the end of this scope instead of curly braces, which means if we run this now, we have the closing connection via dispose before the I'm done running program.cs. This is the older way of doing things. We don't typically do that as often because typically we're just getting to the end anyway before we need to close this connection. So we don't need to have this nesting going on because now you might have another using statement inside of this. We can just have multiple um, using the semicolon at the end. But that's how to use I disposable in your classes or your um, items to make sure that this dispose method gets called no matter what. Whether it's exception or not, it will always get called at the end of the scope of this using statement. Okay. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.